Hello fellow Clashers, I'm Kairos Time and it is time to Clash. Today we're going to be covering the most competitive meta in Clash Royale, the CCGS winning decks and cards. We're going to be covering the five major decks and the top 10 cards used in round two of the CCGS. Hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for jumping on the video today, guys. Uh, if you enjoy this, make sure you subscribe and check out my other content. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at the most competitive meta. I'm very excited about this video. What happened here is Stats Royale went and they had some bots in all of the tournament clans and they were able to gather some information um, about all of the matches that took place in the CCGS round two. So we're looking at the most competitive matches in Clash Royale. And that means that we have the decks that are absolutely meta-defining. They're the strongest decks and the decks that you really need to be aware of. Um, now, when it comes to the CCGS, this is phase two. 48 players made it to the next phase. We're going to be taking a look at all of those 48 players' decks. Don't worry, I've simplified it. Um, but we're going to take a look at all of those decks, figure out the top decks, um, and some crazy statistics that are in here. For example, the Electro Wizard P.E.K.K.A combination together was used in over 2,000 matches when it came to that round two. So you can see that P.E.K.K.A Electro Wizard is, is the meta-defining combination right now. You have to be paying attention to that. What we're gonna do, first of all, is we're going to take a look at these decks, and then afterwards, we're going to take a look at the top 10 cards used in round two um, to give you some good ideas of what are, what are good and bad options at the moment. First deck is the log bait deck. This is the deck you have the princess, the goblin gang, and the goblin barrel, all as that log bait. You also have that ice wizard or ice spirit for a good cycle, and then you have the electro or you have the inferno tower and the um, the knight as the primary defensive units. Then we have the log for a defensive um, and also offensive um, spell, and then we also do have the rocket as a great way to deal with pumps and to finish off your opponent's tower. Or, uh, tower. Um, there were two players that ended up playing this specific deck and won round two using this specific deck. It's very strong, but it was not the most frequently used deck. Next we have the Hog Lightning. There were four people that ended up winning round two with a Hog Lightning deck. Um, he, the primary core cards that were in here were the Hog Rider, Ice Golem, Ice Spirit, the Lightning, and then the Log. And then two players actually ended up winning with the Electro Wizard Guard and Inferno Tower combination. And then two other players used a Mini P.E.K.K.A with either the Bats and the Archers or a Mini P.E.K.K.A with the Princess and the Minions. This deck combination is really strong. You have uh, the, either the Inferno Tower or the Mini P.E.K.K.A for your primary defense, especially against cards like the, the, um, the P.E.K.K.A um, and then also to help defend it against other Hog Riders. Uh, this is a really strong combination. I like the variation with the guards uh, because the guards just do a really good job, especially at countering P.E.K.K.A.s. Um, very interesting combination. And then that Electro Wizard is also very versatile. This other variation with the Mini P.E.K.K.A., I think this one takes a little bit more skill, uh, but it's very strong, especially Especially if you do like playing with the mini P.E.K.K.A. Uh, very, very interesting combination. I really like seeing that in here. Then, there were five players that played with a Three Musketeer Pump variation. There were actually some more decks that included Three Musketeer Pump, um, but they didn't quite fit. They, they were very unique, whereas these ones are a little bit more standard. So the three cards that were required for this type of combination was the uh, obviously the Three Musketeer and the Pump, and then they all had an Ice Golem in their deck. Next. People chose either between Zap or Log, depending on um, what they felt was best for their deck. Uh, then they also chose between either uh, the Bats or the Goblin Gang, and then between the Miner or the Dark Prince. Very interesting to see the Dark Prince come into the CCGS here. I really do like either one of those variations, and we saw variations for all sorts of different uh, combinations right there. Then they chose between two of these cards. Either they went for a dual fireball bait with that uh, minion horde, or they went for bridge spam with either the bandit and the minion horde, or the battle ram and the minion horde, or even the, just the battle ram with the minion, or with the bandit. 
Um, <laughs> the bandit with the minion horde. You get what I'm saying. Um, bandit with the battle ram. I'm uh, <laughs> losing my uh, losing my wording. Um, but this is a this is a really strong combination, and there were a lot of other three musketeer pump decks, and I'll show you all of the outliers. But these are this is the strongest combination it seems when it came to the CCGS. Definitely the most competitive, really strong, difficult to deal with, kind of a high skill deck to learn. But if you can master it, then it really puts your opponent into a tough situation. Next, we have Minor Poison. There were eight people that won with a Minor Poison variation of uh, this similar matchup right here. So obviously Minor and Poison were the two required cards in this deck. Then, they either picked between the Mega Knight or the P.E.K.K.A. Uh, now, when it comes to these competitive matches, what a lot of the, the really competitive players do, they are, they are diving into their opponent's decks. They're looking at all sorts of different counters in there. And so they were jumping back and forth between whatever they thought better countered their opponent's deck or what they thought their opponent would be playing. So you have one of the, these two variations. Both of them work really, really well. Then you have the choice between the goblins and the ice golem, the minions and the bats, and then the log and the zap. Pick one of those two in those different kind of variations and just depending on what you feel fits your playstyle better or what you think your opponent is going to be playing with. Then they finish off their deck by picking two of the following cards, Bandit, Electro Wizard, Inferno Dragon, and the Minion Horde. Very interesting to see the Minion Horde in this combination, but it does make sense. It pairs up pretty well with that Miner, and you can even use the Ice Golem on, in combination with it as well. This is a very versatile deck, very strong. It's no wonder that so many players ended up winning with this type of a deck. It's so... Uh, there are just so many different combinations, defensive, offensive combinations. It really puts your opponent on uh, into a lot of stressful situations uh, because of its ability to really turn a successful defense into a really powerful offense that has to be countered very quickly. Love this type of deck, but it was not the most popular type of deck. The most popular and what I consider to be probably the strongest deck in the uh, in the competitive meta right now has to be P.E.K.K.A. Hog Rider combinations. So these were the three cards. Nine people, nine players ended up winning with this type of a variation where you have the P.E.K.K.A., the Hog Rider, and then the Electro Wizard. Those three together really make for a really strong combination. Then they had for their, uh, their support cards, the Ice Golem, the Bats, and the Goblins. Now I did want to mention that there was one player that actually used an Ice Spirit instead of the Goblins, um, but most players actually used the Goblins instead. Very strong combination. The combination with the Bats and also the Goblins for ground and air support, both of which um, were, are Zap Bait, sort of. I mean, the Goblins aren't necessarily Zap Bait, but if you do Zap a Goblin, then you're ready with or if your opponent zaps your goblins and you're ready with those bats and you can really go put some pressure on them. Then they chose either between the zap or the log, that's not a surprise. And finally there was and there was also one player that actually used the arrows. And then most players ended up including the lightning with this combination. But there was one player that ended up using the fireball and one player that used the poison. This deck combination was is just extremely strong. If you're building a deck for competitive matches or the grand challenges or even classic challenges, you need to be aware of this deck um, and the combinations that uh, can be placed into here. Um, make sure that you have a way to deal with that Inferno or with that P.E.K.K.A. Make sure you have a way to get rid of that Electro Wizard. Super strong combination. Really love seeing this in here. Um, now let's go ahead and just talk about some unique ones. I'm not going to go in depth with all of these, but there, these were some really interesting, unique decks that I really enjoyed watching um, and really just super great. So we had a giant poison meta, or giant poison. Um, I'm used to saying poison meta, or giant, giant poison, goison meta. But um, we have a giant, uh, a goison meta. Uh, deck with the Night Witch. Very interesting right there. This was a, a really interesting deck made by Aukrap, um, who played an Expo with the uh, with a kind of an Expo uh, spawner deck with the Dark Goblin or the, uh, the Goblin Hut and then also the Barbarian Hut. Very interesting co deck. Uh, we also had somebody that played with a Mortar uh, Arrow Bait 
type deck. Very interesting deck, really like seeing that. Um, there was also somebody that played a cannon cart splash yard. It's not really splash yard anymore because we switched out the bowler for the cannon cart, but very interesting combination. Really like seeing this. Um, and uh, then we also had a very interesting minor uh, Mega Knight paired up with the balloon and also with that fireball instead of like the traditional minor poison. Very strong combination. There was also a uh, just a, a very generic uh, kind of you know bridge spam deck and then also a, um, a another mortar deck with the mortar minor combination. Once again another minor mortar minor but it also did have the guards and the, um, the electro wizard in there so very interesting decks. Um, here were the other decks that were kind of outliers that kind of fit into certain combinations and didn't really fit into other ones but but that's that's it for the decks. Now we're going to be talking about the top ten cards um, for the round two in class or in the CCGS. This is something I find very interesting. I really like looking at this because it shows some of the some of the cards that are just really strong in competitive me in the competitive meta. You need to be aware that your opponents are going to be playing cards like these if you're going to be doing especially like a grand challenge but also classic challenges and even some of this does leak into the tournament or into the ladder number 10 we had the bandit uh, with a win rate of 50 percent and a usage rate of 34 percent that's right a th there was bandit in one of every three decks in round two just crazy the bandit is clearly a very good card to be using um, she just does such a great job of taking or really dealing really punishing your opponent if they can't defend with something cheaper um, or even of equal value and really when it comes to something cheaper your only real options are goblins or the ice golem bandit coming in number 10 then we do have number nine which is the ice golem a win rate of 53 percent and then a usage rate of 35 percent now these win rates one thing i wanted to mention here is anything above 50 percent is really good um, anything below 50 percent um, may depending on how far away it is may not be the best but these are the top the, the cards that are used the most and so they're all pretty fantastic you can actually take a look at the complete list on clash uh, on statsroyale.com I'll make sure and leave a link in the description below so you can find these usage rate of 35% a great counter to a lot of um, a lot of popular cards in the competitive meta then we also do have number eight with a win rate of 55 percent and a usage rate of 36 percent very strong um, with the goblins here they're just dudes they just do such a great job at countering bandits for a really great elixir value and they also do a good job at distracting pekkas for a short period of time as well then we have the log with a usage rate of 38 percent a win rate of 46 percent now 46 percent that's lower than the 50 percent but people still use the log a lot because the log it, it's almost always a a battle between the log and the zap and deciding which one you're going to include in your deck right now with there being so many bats in the meta the log just was not that competitive when it compares to zap but it did make the top 10 because it's a very great card to be using then we do have the miner with a usage rate of 39%, almost 40% of players ended up using the miter in the miner in the CCGS in round two. Very strong card, a very strong win condition, especially paired up with poison, which is the next card. 40% of players ended up using the poison, um, and it seems to really pair well a lot, or really well with the miner, and then also with Pekka's and even Mega Knights sometimes. Then we do have number four, which is the Pekka. Such a strong win condition to be using in this meta because it does such a good job at turning a really good, very solid defense into um, a, an offense that really takes some thinking to really get around. I did want to briefly mention that the Mega Knight did not quite reach the top 10 list, but I think that the reason why is because we're looking at usage rate and the Mega Knight was introduced a few days into round two. And so he did not actually get some usage on the first couple of days or the first day. Um, so he was actually number 11, but I do think the Mega Knight deserves at least a mention because I think he would have pushed the, the Bandit out of the top 10 um, if he had been there the whole time. Next, we do have the Bats with a win rate of 51% and a usage of 55%. Uh, very high usage rate here and very great card to be using because they just they just offer so much damage per second and they do require um, Zap or some other anti-air splash troop to be able to get rid of them. Um, very great card. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the top two cards 
This should come to no surprise to a lot of you, the Electro Wizard, a usage of also 55% and win rate of 51%. Such a strong card to be using. The Electro Wizard is extremely versatile on offense and defense. He does such a great job at slowing troops down. Um, not traditionally like the Ice Wizard, but he does stun them briefly and that does add some time. And one of the reasons why he works so well paired up with the, the P.E.K.K.A. is because when you're facing against the P.E.K.K.A. and you have an Electro Wizard slowing down the enemy P.E.K.K.A., then your P.E.K.K.A. is going to take it out sooner and it's going to have a lot of health left over for you to turn into a really great counter push. The Electro Wizard is a very strong card. Ranked S tier in my book on um, nearly any meta, really. Except for maybe tournament where you can get fireball easily, but you get what I'm saying. And number one, with a usage rate of 59%, almost 60% of the players used Zap in their deck. Such a strong card to be using, and with a win rate of 53%, um, definitely definitely boasts uh, a need to have Zap in your deck rather than the Log, especially when playing against uh, a meta that has a lot of bats in there. Obviously, you do have to make sure that you have some type of answer to Log Bait and things like that. But Zap, great card to be having in your deck right now. Make sure that you are aware that your opponents are going to be having Zap in, your de er, in their deck. Thank you so much for jumping on and watching this video. If you like this, please make sure you subscribe, put a comment in the section below, and check out my other videos. For now, this is Karo's time ticking by, and we will see you in the arena.